Hello, it's the 1st of November. My name is Graham Tithley Strong and I'm an orthopaedic surgeon at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge. And today I'm at the Imperial War Museum. Behind me is a Challenger II, which is one of the British Army's main battle tanks. As Livio mentioned in the webinar, before I went to university, I was an officer in the household cavalry. When I wasn't riding around in a horse, I spent most of my time driving around in something like this. So the case that we put up was a 25-year-old national hockey player who'd had a previous stabilisation three years ago. She'd fallen and re-dislocated. In the clinic, she was still unstable and was keen to get back to her sport. The pre-op x-rays showed that she'd had an arthroscopic stabilisation using three large metal anchors which were in the inferior clean mode. On a CT scan, we weren't able to do an MRI scan because of the metal work, we could see that there looks like an established heel sacs lesion. So probably the reason for her failure may have been that she had an engaging heel sacs lesion and perhaps a, a, a latage or a bone block procedure would have been a better initial procedure. It could have been that her shift hadn't been high enough, we can see the anchors aren't really that high, or she could have had a further injury. So with regards to revision, my choice in this situation is to do a latage procedure. I like to have the bone block and the dynamic sling. The challenge with her are the three metal anchors in the inferior clenoid. These are exactly where we want to put the screws. If we take those metal anchors out, there's going to be a large bone defect. And because of the size of the anchors, I'm not sure the drill will push them out of the way. So in this situation, I use the suture buttons. These have mainly been designed to do an arthro eden hibernate, but actually using this system, you can use them from open coracoid transfer. Because of the drill guide, we know exactly where the drill holes are going to be. Taking an axial CT scan cut, right at the anterior edge of the glenoid, we can see where the metal anchors are. We drop a line vertically down five millimetres medial to the edge of the glenoid. This is where the guide's going to be. The gap between the drill holes is going to be 10 millimetres and the drill diameter is 2.8 millimetres. So we place them on this line in the inferior quadrant where it's not going to hit the metal work. The middle point of this is exactly where the drill guide is going to be, so we can measure that out laterally. The distance from this to the bottom of the glenoid is then calculated. So when we do the open procedure, we can calculate where we want to, or we can calculate or measure up where we want to put the drill guide. These are the post-op CT scans at six months, and you can see the bone block has healed very nicely. When we look at the actual view, we can see that the position that the drill guide actually ended up is exactly the position that we pre-planned. If you'd like to know more about shoulder instability or any other type of shoulder condition, visit my website cambridgeshoulder.co.uk or my YouTube channel Cambridge Shoulder.